Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Melvin Way. This is a plant growing series on growing Swiss chard from seeds. The packet says mixed color, so I'm expecting all these pretty multicolored stems. Check out my name on YouTube for more plant growing series and episodes. So it says days to germination 7 to 10. Bury your seeds 3 quarters of an inch deep. Have a bit of spacing and in 60 days you should have a harvest. So these are packed to sell by the end of the year or whatever. And as you can see inside, the seeds are actually quite large. They're almost like kernels of granola. Very large seeds for a vegetable that isn't that big or doesn't look that big. So this is my growing mango from seed series. It looks terrible. We're in the waning twilight days where the mango seedling failed. And for whatever reason, I still haven't conclusively figured that out, but I figured I would use this pot to um, plant some of these Swiss chard seeds. Since the real estate is going to waste, I don't think that's going to recover. I am going to let that trunk stick around for a while before I pull it and conclude that growing mango trees from seed series. But in the meantime, it makes sense to use all of this uh, potting mix in a big pot. All this surface area and real estate to plant some seeds. So I looked at the footage of where I planted these seeds a few times just to see how many germinated later on and I'll tell you that later on but I didn't plant any right near the stem uh, between stem of the mango seedling and the pot because I didn't want any kind of crowding to occur however you can clearly see in this maybe 14 inch diameter pot or so that it's not a six inch spacing. So if you're a foreigner watching this, one inch is 2.54 centimeters. So about 15 centimeters would be the distance that you're supposed to plant these apart. But I'm assuming not all of them are gonna germinate. I'm gonna patent these uh, little loose patches of dirt down. It's mostly potting mix, but at some point I sifted some wild hill dirt from the local North County San Diego Hills. It's a clay loam. It's not quite fully orange reddish and it forms these plates because I sifted it. So the very fine particles sort of congealed into these early plates with the potting mix. That's what you saw when I was digging around in there. So it's day eight and true to its word the seed packet said seven to ten days. So it's um, mid-March at this point and for whatever reason I have two seedlings popping up from there or two shoots at least. I could have sworn I only planted one seed there. I have pretty good dexterity so um, I looked at the footage many times. I didn't let an extra seed slip in there. So I don't know if these are polyembryonic or what but by day nine another seed had germinated First, we're going to take another look at these two. They're a little bit more upright, slightly bigger. I love these almost fluorescent red stems, uh, stalks. Uh, these are the cotyledons. The uh, bottom one hasn't unfolded yet. So the cotyledons are just starter leaves that are included in the seed. And they look nothing like the adult leaves you see on the packaging or in a supermarket. Although I'm not sure we have Swiss chard in our local supermarket here or any of them. So that's the third seedling or maybe it's the second. It's depending on whether the seeds are polyembryonic. So by day 12 all the seeds that were going to germinate have germinated. Um, the cotyledon has unfolded with this bottom one even more so than its close neighbor. So I, I looked at the footage before and I'm pretty sure that that seed is polyembryonic. Two shoots came out, uh, maybe two individual plants. And it looks like we have two over here too. And I definitely reviewed the footage over there. And there was no second seed that slipped into that little hole that I dug. And here's another one that got a later start. I don't know the rhyme or reason behind why some of these germinated more slowly than the others. And this one has all that space to itself. So by day 17, uh, the growth had continued, but it was not very fast. And I think 
most of that is due to the fact that I used potting mix mostly in here. Uh, it has a long history. At some point in the very beginning it was sterilized by being baked in an oven in a turkey tray made of aluminum or I may have steamed this potting mix in a big pot and on a heat plate out on the balcony for two hours to get rid of all the bugs because if you don't do that then there are all these nasty parasites that will kill off your plants such as spider mites and there are also fungus gnats. Uh, springtails are relatively harmless although it can look quite disgusting if you have thousands of those things uh, jumping around after you water so I think that one will do the best. The one at the top, it's got all that space to itself. I'm going to do some watering with my showering can. My routine was to water more deeply in the first go. This pot had the mango seedling in it and I didn't want to over the water that but I did a little bit more watering just to make sure that some water would get in a few inches deep. You don't want your seeds to dry out immediately because they're so close to the top where the sun strikes every day and where all the wind and dryness of the Southern California air will just cause all this evaporation. So I'm doing a infrequent deeper watering for most of my pots. It said that that's a lot better than doing frequent and shallow waterings. So it's day 20 and I'm doing squirt bottle spot watering to prevent overwatering. I watered a little deeper and across the board three days ago. And for my more established plants, watering once every one to two weeks is a pretty good bet watering deeply. It really depends on how dry the weather is, um, many factors, uh, what time of the year it is, how many hours of sun these things get. So as of March 2018 when this was filmed, this balcony was maybe getting three to four hours of sunlight a day. It's afternoon sun. So now that there's no mango seedling to worry about, having different plants at different stages of development is definitely a complicated problem for watering. It's day 24 so I think a squirt bottle will do well. I'm pretty sure all of this soil, the potting mix underneath is mostly wet. You can see a little bit of moss on the left. So I've come to dislike potting mix. I've used it for five years in various um, growing series on my plant growing channel and here you can see one seedling or uh, maybe it's three I think it's a polyembryonic seed it's got three seedlings coming out and this looks like it might have two although the second one that's nearby doesn't look too healthy it looks yellow so maybe there was insufficient watering there it just got baked in the sun and it croaked so uh, this one doesn't have any signs of having more about to pop up. So I thought maybe adding some leftover clay loam from the local Southern Californian hills would help. I'm thinking of going pure real dirt in the future. Uh, clay loam is pretty good. If it were a pure clay soil it would be very reddish orange. The kind of flaky flat stuff particles that are the tiniest components of real dirt that will get all over your shoes. They have electrochemical, electrostatic properties that make them do this. They're very flat, small particles as compared to silt which are much larger and rounder and sand which is much much larger and also round as well or mostly round. They can, they can also be a little squarish. So this is all the spare clay loam I have left to spare. Uh, the loam implies that it's a mixture of sand, silt, and clay. And I'll do whatever um, repositioning I can with my gloved finger here to get these to stand up right. They're all kind of tilting towards the sun, towards the balcony rail. So it's day 28, and I think adding some real dirt helped. I could definitely add some more. But I think the problem with potty mix is it's made of mostly rotting bark, um, pieces of wood, a sphagnum peat moss. 
not the kind of natural medium that plants should be growing in. And thus, I often had slow results, I think, during 2017 growing season because the nascent developing tap roots or plant roots just can't form a high surface area connection with the soil. It's just aerated, um, rotting sludge after a while, after a few months of being wet. As you can see, these smaller, more Johnny Come Lately plants, you know, they're a little bit more round looking the leaves, the cotyledons and the new true leaves as well. So I'm just going to do the squirt bottle watering. Uh, squirt bottle watering just keeps one little localized area wet, but I think also it could help loosen up uh, the dirt as it congeals to the potting mix and get some more aeration in there, maybe wash away any um, toxins caused by the decomposition of the potting mix being wet all the time. So I've noticed that the squirt bottle watering seems to have a pretty good effect. There was a time when these leaves were all fallen over, uh, wilting, but I squirt bottle watered and then they all perked up the leaves after 20 minutes. So it's day 31. I think I should definitely go out there and get some more clay loam. Some of this brownish clay loam that is much better than some of the surrounding areas of dirt that have a very reddish orange color signifying that it's mostly clay in that case. I think this has more silt and sand in it. So it's a good mixture and I would advise against sifting the natural dirt because then you'll just get all clay particles and what can happen is that will sometimes just congeal into a sun-dried brick after you've watered it. It'll adhere to itself uh, other particles and uh, whatever you've poured it into and just become a solid mass, plates of dirt. So I think these new shoots are doing better. I may have buried the third one or just didn't make it. That's unfortunate. Well, likewise for this one. But I think we're making decent headway. I would venture to say if I had clay loam for this entire pot from the very beginning, my plants would be a lot bigger. But perhaps this is a plant that will grow a lot more in the last 30 days or the second 30 days up until day 60 and I'll be ready to harvest pretty soon and eat these but it seems like all the ones I have have these red stems so it's not what I was expecting based on the packaging I was expecting all sorts of beautiful colors I'm not saying that this isn't beautiful it's just not as impressive with so little variety it's all the same kind so that's basically it for this episode. Uh, please stay tuned for a second episode to come out soon. I don't imagine this will be a very long series. I'll just get to a harvest and cook them up and that'll be it. Thanks for watching.